Hello and welcome. My name is Lisa Shea and today we're going to talk about the brand new Kindle Vela system. They just launched this in mid-April and it is not live yet for readers. It is only live right now for authors to try to build up the system full of books so that when they launch it for readers, which will probably be in the summertime sometime, that it actually has a library of books and makes it worth people using. So what Kindle Vela is aiming to be is to be a system much like Wattpad or Radish or the other series-based short read systems that are online. And Kindle Vela is aiming to be a smartphone app. So people should be reading this on their smartphones or on their tablets or other things that run apps. So this is not intended for someone to download a book and read a book from start to finish that's a long book. It's aimed to be a system where someone goes in and starts reading episodes of a story, and each episode is between 600 words and 5,000 words, and then they can read the first three for free so that they get sucked into the story, and then they pay with tokens for every episode after that. And the token amount that they pay is set by the length of the story. So all of this is sort of in the audiobook model where the author isn't setting a price that it's a nice standard price so readers know what they're going to get for the amount of tokens that they spend. So right now, the system, again, is in the stage where authors can put things into the system, but nothing is live yet for readers to read or buy so that we bulk up the system, the Vela system, with as many books as possible. So when it launches, readers are really excited about it and they want to stay in there and they want to spend lots of money in there and all of that kind of stuff. So a question for authors is, do you want to put all your books into a system that isn't going to be live for a couple months, maybe? and your books are sort of stuck there in the meantime. So there's a couple of answers to that, and then we'll get into how this all actually works. Uh, the first answer is that you cannot put anything into Vela that is anywhere else. You can't put any existing Kindle books in here. You can't put any existing paperback books. Even if you have a paperback book and then you unpublish it and then put it in Vela, because of the way paperbacks work, people could still get them in used bookstores. Vela wants to be a system with brand new, never before seen content. So there is no way to put old content into Vela and re-monetize it. This is about brand new series. Now, fortunately, I'm always writing series and I've always got partially done series lying around in my hard drive. So I had eight different series that I had not yet published in any of my traditional uh, places that I put things. So this was a perfect opportunity to put those eight series into the Kindle Vela system. And that way, I mean, it's a, they were just sitting in my hard drive anyway. It's not losing me any money to have them now in the Vela system. And we'll see how Vela goes. It's really good to be a primary entry in any system like this. When the Amazon Kindle system first launched, I put a bunch of books into the Amazon Kindle system and I had my books in their library when they first flooded the market with uh, Kindles back in the old, old days. <laughs> And it was great because there weren't that many authors in the Kindle system at the time, so I got lots and lots of purchases. If the, the same thing happens with Vela, if you're one of the few authors in the Vela system and then they push it really hard, which is what it looks like Amazon's going to be doing, now you're getting a ton of marketing for your writing, for everything else, and a lot of people are going to find out about you. And even if for some reason they don't buy a lot of Vela tokens and read a lot of your Vela books, your name is still going to get that out there and all sorts of people are going to learn about the types of things that you write, which will then serve you well for everything else that you write in the world. And also, let's say that Kindle Vela has some sort of catastrophic failure. I mean, the Amazon's tried doing things like this in the past, and I've participated in most of their other previous projects, which uh, chugged along and then faded away. So let's say that something happens with Vela and it just doesn't work out after a couple months. You, The only really thing that you've lost is a couple months of your book being in a system and getting eyeballs on it. And once Kindle Vela shuts down, if that's the path that it happens to go, then you just take your books out of Vela and you put them right into the Kindle system or Wattpad or Radish or wherever else you want to put them. So it's not like the content's gone bad or anything. Always save a copy of your content. And I'm going to mention this several times in here. You never want to write in any online system. Don't write in Wattpad. Don't write in the Kindle Vela online system. Write in your own system. Save backups. Save multiple backups. And that way, if something does happen to Vela or if something happens to Wattpad or your browser while you're working on it, then you have a copy somewhere else to work with so that you are able to then make your decisions. So that's the gist of what Vela is. It's a 
online Wattpad like or Radish like system. If you haven't used those other systems before, go to Wattpad.com. Take a look at how their system works here. We'll just go here right now so you can see Wattpad. So I've got an account on Wattpad. I've got a bunch of books on here. I've got 28 stories in here. Now, in my case, I do have what end up being full books. So let's go with a Scottish Lass. So each book has a chapter by chapter setup. Let's go back to the main page so you can see this. So it has a cover. What happens to use rectangular covers. Bella is going to be using uh, circular covers. But so you get a, a cover for it and then you get a table of contents with all of the different entries. And people in Wattpad can, you can see how many people have seen it, how many people have started, and how many people have left you comments of some sort on them. So this is the Wattpad experience with the way um, a book is laid out. So Wattpad, you can end up putting a book in there, but a lot of people use this for a serial that has a bunch of different aspects to it. So those are the top three, but I've got horror stories in here, mystery stories, romance stories, another story, you know, you can put whatever you want to, science fiction, historical, more fantasy. So this is the sort of model that um, Amazon is aiming for, is to have stories in here that are of a nature that people keep reading down the series. And Amazon isn't aiming for it to be uh, novels they're aiming it to be serials. And the difference between the two can be sort of big. I mean, clearly Knowing Yourself is an actual novel, and I put it in chapter by chapter. And the way that I write them, people read them chapter by chapter and hopefully <laughs> get drawn into one to keep reading. So that's what Amazon is aiming for, something that when each new chapter comes out, people are eager to read it and read that next piece. All right, so... Let me know if you have any questions about Vela in general, what it's aiming for and how it works and how it's planning to monetize. And then let's go into the actual edit screen so that you can see how Vela works for an author right now, because there is no interface yet that's live for the reader end. All right, which is this window. So the interface for Vela is in the standard normal Kindle Direct Publishing system, which is kdp.amazon.com. You sign in with your normal Amazon account. If you don't have an Amazon account, then you need to make one. And even if you have an Amazon account, if you've never gone into KDP before, once you go into KDP, you'll need to uh, answer a couple extra questions in there to get your KDP system fully set up. It involves things like what bank account you want to deposit your earnings to. Um, it, you're going to have to put bank account number into whatever publishing system you use. So if you have issues with that, set up an electronic bank account somewhere online with, you know, there's all sorts of different online bank accounts. And just use it for Amazon if you're concerned about giving them your regular bank account. But, I mean, they work with millions and millions of authors. You have to take a step somewhere if you're going to be publishing online and trust someone to know what a bank account number is. So we're going to sign in with my Amazon account information. And normally in their system, they have all the different books that you've written. And you can have uh, Kindle books, paperbacks, and now they have hardcover books that they have available. Uh, they're still rolling that out, so that's not available for everyone yet. And the new option at the very top is introducing the Kindle Vela, new storing telling option available through Kindle Direct Publishing. Publish serialized stories one episode at a time. So there's a link right here to get to the Vela system. So we're clicking on that link. All right, so now we are in the brand new Kindle Vela library interface. And it says beta over here. So there could still be tweaks that they're making on these, but this at least is how it's working right now. So I have two books in the Vela system so far. And I'm working on adding, like I said, I've got about eight of them right now that are ready to go to put into here. One of them has five episodes live. One of them has one episode live. So let me show you the settings that are in here now. And then we will do start a story to show how we add a new story. But first, let's take a look at what the options are for an existing story. So this is Butterfly Beneath the Earth. I'm going to click on Manage My Story. All right, so each book that you enter has a circular image. This should not have 
words on it. This is meant to be a uh, an illustration, let's say, for your book. It's important whenever you choose a cover or an illustration or anything for any of your books that it is clear at a tiny size because most people are going to be looking at this on their smartphone. They're going to see an itsy bitsy little image. So this is true for covers and for this Vela image. It has to be something that's clear and that's evocative of the genre that your book is in. So this doesn't look like a cozy mystery. It doesn't look like, I don't know, a space fantasy. It has sort of a dark brooding thing. It doesn't have to specifically, you know, be the picture of the heroine or something like that, but it has to give you some sort of a feeling what the book is about, and it has to be clear that they can even see it in the first place. So this one is Butterfly Beneath the Earth, a Medieval Dark Paranormal Romance. So we'll talk about titles as we go through the things, but you've got a title that should be clearly evocative with what this book is about. The front of it needs to be clear and easy to read because when this trims down into the um, size that they show in their examples, um, let's go into help and see if we can see that. Somewhere in here, reader experience. All right, so when they trim down the content under the title, sometimes they show all the words and sometimes they'll have a dot, dot, dot because they've trimmed it because you've got more words than they can easily show here. So since they can sometimes trim it, always make sure that the words that you put at the front are the important words and then any other filler words after the dot, dot, dot are words that don't matter that much. You get a little tiny description Make sure that that is also clear and engaging and isn't just a summary of the plot. It has to be like a, a little teaser that gets someone interested in reading about it. And then you have the episode list, which are in essence the chapter lists for the book. So th this is just a mock-up that they give of what they think the system is going to look like. This isn't set in stone yet because they haven't rolled it out yet. All right, so let's go back to... So you've got the cover image, we'll call it. The title, you've got your description that you write that is short and has to be engaging and make someone want to read about it. You've got seven story tags. These are like keywords, but they are non-spaced. They are one block of text. So they're like hashtags, but there's no pound sign in front of them. So you have things like dark fantasy, one word, medieval romance, one word, and so on. And then you get to choose from two categories. So we will show all of that in a second. And then you have your episode list, and each of these is, in essence, chapters. And it's good to have some sort of a title for each chapter, so that, because people are paying here, and it's easier for them to pay when they're paying for something that looks interesting versus paying for something that's it's chapter four or chapter five. But also, never, ever give away storyline in here. Don't say... Uh, where Mark dies or something like that, because that really annoys a lot of people to have key spoilers happen before they get to read it. So never give away spoilers, make them something generic but intriguing. All right, so that, that's the bones of the Vela system. So again, let me know if you have any questions about the general structure of how this works. And let's go in and start a new one so that you can see how this process works. All right, so we're at my main Kindle Vela desktop where I can work on the two existing ones and I could go in and edit those stories or change out their covers or you know, edit the episodes or so on. But we're going to start a new story. All right, so it says, tell us about our story. Has a story completion status that is stuck on ongoing because we haven't even put anything in yet. So you can't say that it's a done story if there isn't even any data in there and that is fine. Story title. You know, I talk about this in a lot of my different uh, books that I've written. Story title is absolutely key. When someone searches for something in any Amazon system, the first thing it assumes that you're typing in is the title of something. So if I search in Lord of the Rings, it's not going to look for finger rings or it's not going to look for other things that have the word Lord as a keyword. It's assuming that I'm typing in the title of a book. So it's going to first look for anything that has those words in the title. So if someone searches for Lord of the Rings, it's going to find the book Lord of the Rings. If someone searches for medieval romance, it's going to, I mean, it, it's going to assume that medieval romance might be the title of a book, and it's going to look for books that have medieval romance in the title. So the most important place to always put keywords is in your title. 
Now, you don't want your title to look like a mismatch of keywords. So you want it to start with something that looks like a title and then have a dash and then have a couple of keywords in there phrased in a way that still look like a title or subtitle. And that way, when people search on keywords, they hopefully find your book. Because yes, you can put them into the keyword field, but there are so many books in the Amazon system nowadays that it's going to be on page 200 before it starts to get to books that have it in the keyword and don't have it in the actual title. So let's put in for this one, Elizabeth and Charlotte. All right, so that's the thing that's going to show up clearly right underneath the image. And that's the title part that we want to be clear that people are going to see. And I had originally thought when I was going to do a book version of this, that I was going to have all these other Pride and Prejudice, Sweetly Romantic variants, um, but the, you get less space in the Kindle Vela system. So you have to really hone in which keywords are most important and will be most useful to this. A Sweetly Lesbian, how many characters do I have? Romance of Pride and Prejudice. All right, so I have stuffed in a bunch of keywords there that are going to be useful to me. And I'm going to uh, copy this out into a document so that I always keep, always keep a copy for yourself of everything that you do. Normally, I would have written all this stuff out beforehand, but I uh, just decided to work on this today. So I'm doing it the opposite way of writing it in here. So you can change this stuff later on. So put in the best shot that you've got at what you want to do, but you should be able to uh, make tweaks to it later on. So we've got the key title area, and then we've got a couple of keywords. And let's go with sweet instead, because it's more likely someone's going to search for, search for sweet romance. Someone could search for lesbian romance. Someone could search for Pride and Prejudice. So I've got a bunch of different keywords in here. And it's clear to the readers, hopefully, what kind of a story this is. Uh, when you're doing romances, th some romances are super racy and some are very, very tame. So it's good to put some sort of a qualification in here so people know what they're getting because people prefer both kinds of reading. I'm not quite sure about the sweet love romance of Pride and Prejudice. I don't like saying based on. Yeah, let's just leave up for now. All right. Author name. Jeez Louise. <laughs> uh, what in the world? <laughs> Author name. Uh, you can put in pen names. Um, definitely lots of people write in pen names. I have a pen name. If you're going to do a pen name, I would only have two names, your main name that you use for most of your stuff, and then the pen name, which you use for uh, another group of things. You want to have accounts set up for Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and everything else for whatever name you use. So the more names you have, the harder it is to manage all of them. So just for the sake of sanity, try to keep your pen names to a minimum. And always check Amazon to make sure no one else is using the name before you set up a pen name or before you set up an author name. Because if someone out there is writing really dark horror under your name, you don't, and you're not writing really dark horror, you want to make sure that people who find your works know that you're a different author. Amazon does not disambiguate in, in any way, which is a big problem right now, between authors who happen to have the same name. So you need to do it yourself. Put in a middle initial, do something so that your name is clearly a different author than this other person who's already in the Amazon system. All right, description. You've got 500 characters. It has to be short and sweet and powerful and engaging. So I'm going to write something off the top of my head since we're sitting here, but I'll come back later and really tweak this to make it more powerful. So the classic tale of <laughs> and prejudice gets a gently romantic update. Charlotte have always had feelings for each other, but the attenders were not a time which welcomed such affections. 
through the familiar world of Pemberley while their love blossoms. Is that not right? Pemberley. All right, so, you know, something like that, something that people know what's going to happen. They know what they're up for. This is gently romantic. This is about Elizabeth and Charlotte and so on. So we can always edit that later, but I think you get the general gist of it. Don't just talk about the plot. Don't talk about yourself as an author. People want to know what the story is going to be about and are they going to be interested in it. Story image. These are circles. It says right there, doesn't need to include the title or author name. And really, this is so teeny that if you tried to put the title or author name in there, it would be unreadable to nearly all people. So really, you just want an image that's evocative of the genre that you're in and the storyline. So this is the cover that I had planned to use back when I was going to do this as an actual book. So I want something like that. Let's save this as cover square. All right, so we're going to pull out all this text. We're going to squareify this. So now the choices are I could make a big square and have all of this image in the square, but then that would get really tiny when it got reduced down into a tiny square. Or I could truncate just to the top of the bodices, which I think might be a better choice in terms of doing this. My cat is trying to eat something, and I have no idea what is even in there to be eaten. Cat, I don't see anything in there that's edible or that should be eaten. All right, sweetie, come on, just leave alone all of that stuff. See, look, nothing edible. Good kitten, come on, come on out. Well, you want to play with the caps? Here, here you go. Go play with the caps. All right, so we're going to squareify this, and I'm just going to focus on this top area and see how much I can get in a square. All right, I think that that no, now remember when it goes to a circle, it's going to lose the edges, so you want enough space around it. So let's try that. So we'll save out a JPEG of this. All right, so let's see how that works. So we're going to upload the image. We'll see how this looks. Oh, I forgot. They want 1600 by 1600. So we'll take a look at that in a second. That actually looks really good. All right, so let me make, see what the size is. There. It's close to 1600 by 1600. Now, square, strangely, even though I tried to do a square, it did not cut a square. So let's set that to 1600. I'm holding down. I wonder if my shift key is broken for some reason. If I hold on this shift key. It's just not reading the shift key. Super strange. All right, well, we're going to have to do this the manual way. <laughs> All right, that's leaning a little forward to one side. Let's try trimming it centered 1600 to 1600. All right, so let's try that. All right, so 1600 by 1600, you can see here that it starts to shop, but, but it says Elizabeth and Charlotte. So it shows the two rent uh, Regency dresses shows Elizabeth and Charlotte for a lot of <laughs> Pride and Prejudice people. That's all you need to know what the story is about, which is my target audience here. And the rest of it got chopped off, but that's okay because the rest of it is keyword filler that its purpose is in the title is to catch people's 
keyword searches when they are searching in the system. All right, so the image is set. The primary category we'll say is romance. Secondary category is historical fiction, but here I'll leave this up for a second so you can see all the categories. So action and adventure, dystopian, erotica, fantasy, historical fiction, humor, LGBT, mystery, paranormal, science fiction, teen and young adult thriller. So choose whichever two meet your criteria. So we'll go with historical fiction. Story tags. So you get up to seven. I'm just going to put random things in for now to get things in there. Lesbian, 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 romance, romance, uh, Regency, Pride and Prejudice, Historic Romance, Three, four, five, six. I'm drawing a blank. England. Anyway, you put in seven things, you can take things in, you can take things out, get a sense of what works and what doesn't work. So I always hit save. Uh, well, let's just review what's in here. So we've got the title, we've got the author name, we've got the description, we've got the story image, we've got two categories, and we've got seven tags, which are like keywords. So I'm going to save as draft. I always save first just to make sure that this thing saved. And now we're ready to publish and start episode one. All right, so this is the first chapter in essence. So title, so let's go and open up the story. So this is in writings. Uh, all right, so this is still a work in progress. So forward, we don't need the forward. Chapter one. So what I'm doing is I'm putting chapter one into its own document. So we'll save this as Unfortunately, my computer makes me go rebrowse into the folder I was just in. I don't know what is up with this. <laughs> I was just in this space. All right, so we got a chapter one folder. This chapter one folder has 1444 words. So you need each chapter to be between 600 and 5,000. Now you could type right in here or you could cut and paste into here, but I always, always recommend that you import text so that way you have it in a document somewhere on your local system. If you have any sort of problems at all that you know that you've got it in that local system. If you make changes, I would make changes in your local system and then re-import it. That way you know you always have a copy of everything. It says right here that it has to be 600 to 5,000 words. So we're importing that text. Chapter one. It's saying just make sure that it's going to overwrite what you've already written. We haven't written anything yet, so that's fine. So upload text. All right, so it has brought in these words. It doesn't like the British spelling. We will add those to the dictionary because that's the way that it should be. So the three main types of formattings you can use are bolding things, italicizing things and underlining. Never ever underline anything in any modern book unless it's clickable. So they used to have conventions about underlining certain things. Don't underline anymore. The modern convention is to never underline unless something is clickable. It's the way that people are trained nowadays. So use bold or use italics if you need to highlight things. So we will call this episode Netherfield Park is Let. You need it to be something short. <laughs> Their interface is going to trim things. So don't write something giant, even though you have 77 characters. Go nice and short with the episode title. Put in your text that has whatever text you're going to do. And then author notes. This is going to be a little note at the end of your episode or chapter that is going to 
give a note from you, the author, to the reader. This cannot be anything that drives people off-site. Amazon wants people who are in Vela to stay in Vela and keep reading books. So you should not do anything that drives people off-site. It should be about a uh, thank you for reading. Please uh, subscribe to my story. Please like my story. So thank you so much for reading my Pride and Prejudice story. I adore Pride and Prejudice. I own many copies of the books, and I probably own every <laughs> DVD version that exists. Um, please like, follow this story, and like this ep episode. And I'd love to hear your feedback on this storyline. If you enjoy romance, I have many, many romances on Amazon for you to enjoy here. So we have too many enjoys in there. All right. Thank you so much for reading my Pride and Prejudice story. I enjoy Pride and Prejudice. I own many copies of books and I probably own every DVD version that exists. Please follow this story and like the episode. Yeah, I'll put a period there. I'd love to hear feed your feedback on the storyline. If you treasure romance, I have many, many romances on Amazon for you to enjoy. All right. So we'll copy this off into our book here so that we have a copy of that too. All right, so now you have a preview option. So always preview everything because you want to make sure that the word wrap and everything else is working properly. So we're going to open the preview. So again, short chapter heading. Don't make it giant. Make it short, two or three words, maybe four if one of them is short. <laughs> and then just scroll down and make sure that all the spacing and paragraphing and everything is the way that you want it. There's my note from the author. All right, the first three episodes are free. So you don't set the tokens and the first ones are always going to be free. This is 1446 words, it'll be zero tokens. The first couple episodes are meant to suck a person in and get them hooked on your storyline so that they then pay for the rest of them. So I would make sure that your first three episodes are engaging and interesting. And this is true no matter what you write. This is going to be true for anything that you do. You need to hook someone early with the first chapters so that they then keep reading whatever format you're working in. Release date, um, people love to binge read, so at least the first four should all be live together. And then after that, if you want to dole them out, you should dole them out on a daily or weekly basis. Nothing longer than that, because people who are reading these things have lots of options. And if your things start coming out every month, they're going to completely forget about your storyline and go on and read bunches of other things. So it's better to have them coming out quick. I, I think we all either binge watch or know someone who binge watches nowadays. And people are in that mindset now. So if you have a bunch of books, it might even be better to just dump them all in the system so you get as many readers, as many likes as humanly possible so that then your book gets elevated higher in the system and elevated higher in the ranking and gets lots and lots of reads over line. So your options here are save. So I will always hit save. And I am not going to publish this yet because I want to take another look at this before I publish it. But let's go back out now to the library. So this one has the title. It has the cover image. It has one episode that's still in a draft format. So let's manage my story. So we've got the description. We've got the tags. We've got the categories. This thing is still in process. We've got one episode in here that is in a draft format and that I am going to work on some more and do some more reading on before I actually put it live. When you put something live, because right now the Kindle Vela system is not live, it's not that anyone is reading it. So I, and these ones I actually did publish to put them live and they are sitting there in a live state, but no one is reading them because this has not been rolled out to the public. So. Uh, at least if you're working on this in the stage where we are still gearing it up for getting ready, 
you don't need to worry as much about it being live because we don't know yet when this is going to go live. If you work on this when the system is actually live and there are readers, then I would be a little more cautious and make sure that you have completely thoroughly vetted it and made sure that everything is absolutely perfect before you put it into a live state. I'll note that you can unpublish things if you decide that you've made some sort of complete disaster and publish something that is actually live somewhere else, you know, on Barnes and Noble or something else. There are reasons that you might have to unpublish. So you have that option. And let's go in and manage this story. You can still edit episodes. So this chapter is live, this episode is live, but I still have an edit episode option on it. So if I realize that there's a typo in there or something like that, I can go in and fix it. And you'll see on this one that the first three are free. So the tokens counts are set to free because the first three are sucking someone in to hopefully really like the story. And then entry four has a seven token cost and entry five has a 10 token cost. So this is probably about, these I think were about 2000 words each and you know, they're free. This one is about 700 words and this one's about a thousand words. And that's where it gets that seven token and 10 token. I wanted these next chapters to be a little shorter, which then makes them cheaper so that someone who's reading it doesn't come up here and then suddenly hit a price of 50 tokens, which I think is the maximum that they could charge and say, wow, I'm not going to pay 50 tokens for this. I want it to be a small number so that they say, oh, it's only seven more tokens. Hey, I've got seven tokens. All right, I'll give that a shot. You want this hurdle between when they're reading free stuff and when they convert to paying to be as painless as possible for them to say, oh, all right, I'll gobble up the next one and then the next one. And then if you want to start making the chapters longer again, then you could do that. I might err on the side of having more smaller chapters to keep them reading along rather than some gigantic chapters, which then have really high price tags on them, which makes it seem more of a chore. Because when they're looking at this interface here, they're not seeing, and, and again, this is the admin interface, but the reader interface is fairly similar, that they don't see the word count on there. And people don't really think about word counts in general anyway. They're just seeing token counts. So you want the token counts to be something manageable, and they're getting the sense of progress as they're working with their way through the story, rather than hitting walls of gigantic token counts, which may cause them to pause a little more. So that gets into the psychology of how to keep a reader reading on down the line. But in general, when you write, you should not fluff things out with filler words because people get really bored with that. But you should also not cut out important words just to make it sparser. It's a balance in there about providing the storyline that is intriguing and interesting and that moves along at a good pace and that has good descriptions and all that other kind of stuff. So all of my advice that I've given in many, many other areas and books about uh, writing a good story in general applies here. And the only difference is that you're chunking it out into pieces that are engaging for each piece and that there's something about the end of each piece which makes you want to keep moving along and read what happens next. So it shouldn't feel abrupt or like it was artificially chopped. Hopefully you can make a clean break in each case that keeps a person reading along and that feels like a natural part of the story arc. All right. So that is how the Kindle Vela library is working right now. Let me know if you have any questions about any of this, about how you should think about titles, think about images, thinking about the little description that lures someone in thinking about the chapter headings, and then think about the way that you construct the story to keep a reader reading along. I am happy to answer questions. I am happy to do updates as we get changes in it. Again, this is a work in progress. It's still in beta format, so they may add in some fields or tweak the way fields work. I will do updates if that sort of stuff happens. But other than that, I hope you have good luck in Kindle Vela, and we will see what happens when this launches. So thank you, and have a lovely afternoon.